Joining me now, the Daily Wire editor-in-chief, Ben Shapiro, back in action. Welcome back, Ben. Hey, thanks. How are you doing? So, uh, very well. Thank you very much. So, what do you think of the president's top three picks, the people that we're hearing so far? And do you think that this is actually the final list, the final three? My guess is it probably is the final three. Uh, I'm hearing from a lot of folks inside the administration this is the final three, which is too bad. I thought that Mike Lee from Utah would have been the best pick here, simply here, because ben you know exactly Shapiro. how he's going to vote on every issue. He's a senator, so he probably sails through without any problem. And you're not going to have to worry about his legal interpretation since he's been on the record about virtually every issue as a senator. Uh, one of the big problems with how we do these judicial selections is that you have to draw a balance between what you know about these nominees and what you don't, meaning that if you pick somebody with a clear, convincing record of originalism, then the left is more likely to tank them, just as they did Robert Bork back in the 1980s. If you know how they feel about Roe v. Wade, then that's going to lead the Senate to, to shut them down. So instead, what you get is a bunch of inane questions about how much do you like Roe v. Wade? And you have some, somebody say, well, you know, it's precedent. And which which means nothing. I mean, there are lots of cases that have been precedent. It's incredibly irritating how we do these judicial confirmation hearings. You don't learn anything new about these folks, which is why the vast majority of people who are even brought up for the hearings, unless they are wildly unqualified, like Harriet Myers, for example, end up on the Supreme Court. Yes, I think uh, just about anyone the president picks. It's, but it's interesting because he, he goes through a different less intuitive process with his Supreme Court picks than he does with some of the other decisions. And I don't know if this is because it's unfamiliar territory, but it, it certainly is fascinating. And you're absolutely right, not only about Mike Lee, and, and the more I think about it, uh, and, and Ted Cruz actually wrote a, a really good piece for Fox News Opinion, uh, he's stating basically what you said, which is if you don't want surprises, then you should probably pick someone who's got a very consistent philosophy who will follow through on that uh, judicial philosophy for decades to come. Mike Lee is young, he's consistent, and he's also a senator, which means that if there are Democrats or Republicans on the fence, you may have people, even in another party, who would be more likely to vote for him based on the interaction that they've had with him. He's an affable guy, uh, but, you know, uh, apparently, and I know the president had a conversation with Mike Lee. All we can hope is that his unpredictability uh, rears its head once more here, and that Mike Lee is the surprise pick on Monday. I hope so, too. I mean, the, the other three picks, I think all of them are fine. I do have my preference. I think that, that Coney Barrett would be the best, followed by Keth Ledge and finally Kavanaugh. I have the most doubts about Kavanaugh simply because, having read many of his decisions, it seems like he's, he's very much in the line of, of Justice Roberts, which could mean too clever by half. I think he'll probably be more solidly textualist than, than Roberts has been. But mm -hmm. re reminder that, that when it came to Roberts' opinion in Obamacare, the very basis of that opinion, which suggested that Obamacare was a tax rather than a, a fine, uh, that, that logic came from a Kavanaugh opinion on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. So you know, I've, I've got problems with, with Kavanaugh in general. He's being pushed very hard by a lot of folks from Team Bush, who, who knew him way back when uh, and are very fond of him. He's kind of the D.C. insider pick. I think that Keth Ledger Barrett would, would probably be more solid in terms of, of what originalists are looking for. Uh, let's talk about Barrett a little bit. She's from Indiana, uh, currently serving on the 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. She's young. She's 46. Uh, but she does have what Dianne Feinstein personally attacked her on is uh, more of an informed philosophy based on her religion. And you can see the left will adamantly go after someone like that. Well, this is exactly why Trump should pick her, frankly. <laughs> the, the fact that the left is going to attack an observant Catholic for being an observant Catholic is going to win in Pennsylvania. So I don't really see the, the reason in shying away from that fight. If they want to go after a 46-year-old mother of seven who happens to be Catholic and who has written extensively on the interaction of, of Catholicism and the law, she said, for example, that judges in death penalty cases who are Catholic, observant Catholics, should recuse themselves rather than ruling on the death penalty. Uh, she says that abortion, however, is more a matter of public policy than, than death penalty in individual cases. The, the, let the left go after her. Like, I, I don't know why people would shy away from a fight here. The more extreme the left looks, the better it is for President Trump. And attacking an articulate, excellent candidate with a, with a great story like Amy Barrett, I just yeah. don't see how that hurts President Trump in any way. All right, we'll see. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised either because I think he wants to put a, a woman on the high court. And I think he'll put some pressure on uh, particularly some of those female senators who are looking to run for the presidency in, in 2020. Because if the future is female, it would be pretty hypocritical of them to vote against her. Uh, ben, thank you so much. Thanks a lot.